Welcome to The Print. Today we have a very special guest with us, Justice Indu Malhotra, former judge of the Supreme Court. She has not only inspired many women to choose litigation as their career choice in the field of law, but also has been a role model for many of her male colleagues. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us today. Um, there are many firsts, I think, attached to your journey in the legal profession. But my first question to you today would be in connection with the history which Supreme Court made recently by designating 11 women advocates as senior lawyers. Most of them uh, were truly inspired by you, uh, which I got to know after having some personal conversations with her. But I want to go back to 2007 when you were designated as, uh, a Supreme, as a senior advocate of the Supreme Court. You were the only woman in that list of senior advocates. And now 17 years later, we have 11 women advocates in the list. How do you see this growth for women in the legal profession? I think the growth for women in the legal profession is great. In 2007, when I was designated as a senior lawyer, it was not that I was the only woman. In fact, I was the only lawyer to be designated as a senior amongst men and women. And I always feel I don't want you know to uh, to acknowledge that I have you know got designated or appointed to the uh, as a judge because I'm a woman. Hmm. I feel it has been on the basis of merit yeah. and competence. That is my view. I really never like uh, you know to hear that I have been um, given uh, you know my progress has been on account of my gender. Yeah. Secondly, I do feel that there are great opportunities which the legal profession has thrown up for women, particularly after the economy opened up. There was corporate practice which started. There are so many job opportunities, in-house opportunities of working with the MNCs. There are banks, there are PSUs which have highly specialized legal departments. So there are a myriad of opportunities for women today. And apart from that, in Delhi alone, we have, I think, all the tribunals, commissions, etc. So there are so many fora where women can practice and grow. When I joined the profession, which was in 1983, there were very few women in litigation. And the reason was that the gestation period mm -hmm. to grow in the legal profession was really long. I think people became financially independent after more than a decade of practice. So that period was there and after the economy opened up, lots of opportunities were thrown up. And that's actually the point of time when women, more and more women, you know, took to the legal profession as a career. Otherwise, prior to that, it was more like a floating population. Women would do law, then they'd get married and they'd move off. So that became a good career path and more and more women took to it, especially after the um, economy opened up and it became far more remunerative, yeah. far more remunerative. Right. In 2018, you created history by becoming the first woman in the Supreme Court to become a judge on the bench. I mean, of course, we have seen elevations in various high courts, but this was the first time that a woman lawyer got, you know, got elevated as a judge to the Supreme Court. So, of course, it was a tenure of about three years. So, from lawyer to a judge, what was the difference and also what were the obstacles which you overcame? Uh, well, when I was appointed as a judge, it was a unanimous decision of the Collegium. And I really enjoyed that part. Of course, your perspective completely changes. When you are a lawyer, you're advocating the cause of your client. When you are a judge, you have to hold the scales of justice between the parties. You have to be mindful that you are dispensing justice and you have to work with that perspective. You are not advocating the cause or, you know, of either party. You have to, you know, completely neutralize your mind and act impartially. So that, and I think, you know, dispensing justice is, a great experience it's i found that the most fulfilling part of my career you know because if you are able to reach out to people you know who are the poorest of poor or so many causes 
it's a very fulfilling experience hmm. and i feel in the profession no matter how much money you earn at the end of the day it's a matter of numbers right. the fulfillment you get by dispensing justice is unparalleled with your experience um could you tell us why is it important for uh, you know the system the, the 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 legal system or the judicial system to particularly the judicial system to have more judges on the bench women judges on the bench whether it is the trial court the high court or the supreme court well having representation from you know various uh, from of course between men and women also it brings about a more balanced approach and there are certain issues which are more peculiar to women so that really contributes to the perspective and that helps in you know the, the quality of the justice which you are dispensing with it helps a lot there are so many issues which are peculiar to women there are sexual offenses against women so you know to get a, have a more balanced approach it's best if there are more men and women but i will put a caveat to that i am of the firm view which i have said in all my public you know speeches etc that women like men should be appointed you know to a public office on the basis of merit and competence because you are dealing with the fates of life with the fates of you know, you have to do it in accordance with law and not because you're a woman right so right. i definitely would put that caveat in right uh just i just did a background check and i got to know that you know before um, uh, you got appointed to the supreme court as a judge uh you were given offers in fact the collegium had reached out to you to become judge in multiple high courts but it seems that you did not take it what was the reason so the first offer i actually got was in when i was 39 years old by justice ahmedi and thereafter i was made several offers by justice a sanand justice sp bharucha justice arijit pasayat and various others it was for personal reasons that I did not accept judgeship both my parents were quite old they were not and that time transfer policy was okay. you know in operation so uh, there was no question of my moving out of delhi even in delhi i had certain you know constraints okay which uh, for which i didn't uh, accept judgeship but i have of course the greatest respect for judges okay ma'am your father was a senior advocate uh, very well renowned and you of course followed his footpaths the fact that you came from that you the fact that you had a family support did it in some way aid you or you faced your own challenges in your journey well to begin with i was really not interested in the legal profession at all i was definitely and strongly inclined towards academics and uh, in fact i you know got admission two years and gave it up and of course my father was very insistent he felt that uh, you know he really encouraged us to join the legal profession so we three of out of his four children have all done law and of course three of us are practicing so he really did initiate me into the profession i strayed into it i was very resistant earlier in fact i had got a permanent job uh, as a lecturer in gargi college mm. which i turned down mm -hmm. and then i started doing law in the evening while i was uh, you know going to uh, the chambers of one of my father's colleagues mr kl arora that time and the evenings i did my law from mandir marg and uh, then you know i got more and more interested and made it my full time career 1983 january i entered the profession hmm. and of course uh, you know my father's infrastructure was a, gave me a great head start which most people don't have he had a lovely a chamber in the supreme court we had a big office in the house so that was surely very very helpful the infrastructure but in so far as practice is concerned i followed an entirely different path he was a senior counsel who had specialized in labor law and he had authored five editions of the law of industrial disputes uh, my path was different I worked in a solicitor's office and then I took the advocate on record exam in 1988 and after that I practiced actively as an advocate on record so I really inherited no clients or no practice from my okay. father okay. and then I became a senior lawyer and by then uh, he was 
you know, quite old. He was in his late 80s. So there was no question of, you know, inheriting mm -hmm. a practice. I had to face all my challenges on my own. And that's what helped me grow. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. helped me grow. Yeah. So, Bam, often, um, you know, in the legal profession, the biggest challenge is to convince the client that a woman advocate can you know, represent his or her case honestly before the, before the bench. What has your experience been on this uh, aspect? Uh, well, as an advocate on record, I never felt this discrimination ever. I, you know, had a file and appeared for the largest industrial houses and companies. And uh, most of my work was from Bombay. Hmm. So there was no problem of, uh, and my practice grew very rapidly and I had a large practice. I had almost 10 juniors. Hmm. And uh, then the change came when I became a senior lawyer. That growth was more gradual because, you know, it was the first time that a woman had got designated after some 40 yeah, years. Yeah. So it took time to grow. In the beginning, of course, people, you know, brief you a lot in matrimonial matters because they think women are good with that or motor accident claims. But slowly, slowly, the growth did happen. You know, then I was appearing for various uh, corporates, etc. That's right. But I would admit that, you know, in council practice, there is certain amount of uh, that at that time, not now, there was a certain level of lack of acceptability, you know, uh, like for an, as an advocate on record, I never felt that, but as it did take time, hmm. it did take time and there's no doubt about it. How about disparity in terms of, uh, you know, fees which a woman advocate can actually command or demand? I don't think that's true any longer. Okay. In fact, three of the, you know, 12 women, there's another one who's got designated, were my chamber juniors. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yeah. Shireen Khajuria, Liz Matthew and yes. Kavita Wadia. That's right. They've all worked in my chambers for several years. That's right. In fact, they tell me that there is no difference between what the men are being paid and the women. So I don't think it's any longer really true. Hmm. Uh, so moving on to your journey to the bench, as uh, when you in fact got elevated, that was the first time the Supreme Court of India had three women judges on the bench. Uh, how about that journey in the sense, did you face any sort of, uh, um, I won't call discrimination, but any sort of, uh, you know, unwelcoming behavior from your fellow judges or anybody, the staff, the infrastructure, how has your journey been as a judge? Very smooth, Exclusively, yes. very smooth because uh, most of, you know, the male judges, especially those who were directly elevated from the bar and even others, they actually treated me like an equal. They were very friendly. In fact, I, I was, you know, on very good terms with several of them because we had worked together as lawyers for yeah. years. Yeah. So I didn't feel any kind of discrimination there. Okay. And when it came to voicing your opinion in the courtrooms? Not at As all. As a judge? Not at all. On okay. the very first day, the first bench I sat in, on the very first day was with Justice Adarsh Koel. Hmm. And uh, he jokingly told me, he said, Indu, you will have to handle the bench today. So I kept quiet. And then he saw that I was so actively participating and I wasn't overwhelmed when any top seniors came and appeared before me at all. Because we had been colleagues for about over 30 years, no, 30, right. 35 years. Right. So I wasn't overwhelmed because we had seen, you know, each other grow. Right. So, uh, and I was actively participating. Then at the end of the day, he said, I'm so happy I wasn't expecting it. And I was joking when I was telling you that you handle it. So, okay. so I really didn't feel it at all because, you know, I was every day of my life for the past 35 years in the court. Yes. So there was nothing, you know, which was new to me. In fact, Justice Gogoi, uh, who was, uh, you know, the, the second senior most judge by then, he told me, he said, see, you should have no transition period. He said, we find that the judges who come from the high courts, they take about six months because the practice is different in right. the Supreme Court. That's you have 136, which is a discretionary jurisdiction, etc. So he said, you've been here throughout, so your transition shouldn't take long. Hmm. And I remember in a couple of months only, he had, uh, you know, on a day when one of the judges was uh, not available, he was absent. He told me, he said, uh, will you hit the bench? I said, of course I will. Hmm. So, you know, because I didn't feel that I was a stranger or, you know, I didn't get overwhelmed by anyone. Hmm. So. so, how satisfying has your journey been as first as a lawyer and then as a judge? And what would you like to, 
um, you know, say to inspire more women coming into the legal profession? Well, my uh, approach in the profession from day one, and that's what I would like to tell the youngsters, is develop a good work ethic. You must discharge the work which comes on your table with promptitude and never be lackadaisical about it. The minute I am telling you from my personal experience that once you complete the work from unknown sources, work comes back to your table. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you from completely unknown sources. I feel it's a principle of nature mm -hmm. that, you know, work will keep regenerating. And that's how my practice grew. I grew from one brief to another. So one is that you have to be focused about your work, be single-minded and consistent. Right. You must not say, oh, I don't have work. So, you know, I won't go to court. Okay. I don't have a matter. So, in fact, once I remember my father asked me, he said, you have something in court. You're leaving at 8.30 a.m. I said, no, that's my workplace. I was always available during working hours and there was no question of my taking vacations hmm. when the court was in uh, you know yeah there was no question hmm. so otherwise you lose out you have to be consistent you have to be focused and you have to discharge your work with promptitude well thank you so much for joining us for this conversation justice manotra it's be it's such a pleasure to hear you about your journey about your experiences um, and I hope you've inspired many of our viewers also to undertake a similar journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.